now it's great yes so how are you all doing like uh in your studies college everything how's everything going i'm actually yes ma'am it is actually good but due to this covid pandemic we are having our online classes yeah like you and are I, just in the first year and you would have never met right it's all virtual yes ma'am everything is virtual virtual classes seminars sessions everything is virtual our induction program has also been virtual so ev- everything is being too online and uh, there is a uh, headache of everything yeah you know it means like yesterday itself we were discussing with our wtf people that due to this covid uh, you know first and second years of college are at that phase of the life like you want to enjoy the most of it and for us it has been like we had not even spent uh, about a semester when this lockdown was announced and we were like okay so our entire college life is gone now so now the moment we will be entering the college it's directly third year so we are like okay <laughs> every enjoyment is gone so i can just feel you <laughs> like you people have not even met each other no induction nothing your fresh years is gone <laughs> everything about college life is like okay but yeah whatever happens it happens for good you can explore many more things because of this lockdown there there's a lot of positive things about this lockdown as well so yeah yes ma'am the most positive thing about it is that we don't have to eat mess ka khana we are having ghar ka khana in even this college days and i am very happy about it but this is the only positive side of this covid pandemic online classes no there are much more uh, uh, as well like uh, you know what i believe is that right after the school you need that small break always to explore yourself so you people are getting that break actually you are not directly into that college life and you have got that break you you, you probably have a better overview of what you want in your life that phase i guess every everyone should have in their life they should get a chance to explore themselves so it's somewhere good also uh, yeah there are some negatives but there are positives as well so yeah it's balanced right now um, what we want that college should be open fast early yeah yeah it will be like uh, i guess by march or april uh colleges will be open it's my own speculation let's see how it works but yes i believe that they'll be open soon mom how you start you start competitive programming means uh, you are doing from schooling or after college you started that uh i i started it in my college itself uh so basically my college atmosphere is such i would say that from the first day itself we are like okay you have to enter competitive programming so uh the in fact uh, credit goes to my college as well as some credit to me as well uh, i always had this that the day i enter the college even during my induction program i remember i was busy forming my team for acm icpc i was like i was wondering people like okay this person is a good coder or this person is that so yeah we can team up or anything so i was looking for people over there then uh, i joined clubs and communities in my college which were about competitive programming so like you won't believe but in the very first week of our college we were taught uh, not taught we were actually asked to create profiles on code poses code shift and everything so i would say uh, some uh, first is the atmosphere because we already know about these things there are many people who actually don't even know about code forces code shift even in the third or fourth years we knew it since the very first week of our college but then there are still students who don't uh, start it i found it very interesting personally because i had been a java coder for about 4 to 5 years since my school days so i love challenges in my life so uh, the very f- first meeting with our college seniors they were like uh, java and competitive programming they are not meant for each other they they had this 
so i took it as a challenge i was like okay if it is not meant to be i'll i'll make them possible i'll do competitive programming with java so i started like that like okay i have this challenge i have to be excellent in competitive programming with java that was my challenge i had nothing with competitive programming till then but then gradually when i started uh, solving problems i i literally enjoyed that so then uh, i don't know how it happened but i became part of this google wtf program there we were taught python so when i learned python i don't know like how it happened but uh, one day i was participating in the contest and naturally i started writing the code in python because it was uh, very easy to uh, write code in python as compared to java so i started writing and uh, in one contest i solved five questions consecutively like without any wrong submission in python and i was like what like okay so i i was ranked internationally 900 in that contest and i was like okay so it's not about language that okay you should know this language or that language it's about which language suits the question the most you have to just see which language or which parameters can solve a problem in the best way possible so yeah it just happened naturally it was never planned i i have no technical background honestly like there's no one in my family who's been into engineering uh, i'm the first person who's into the technical field so everyone is from the commerce background right so my sister is uh, pursuing ca my brother is doing actuarial science so it's like everyone's from commerce background i had nothing no idea about what competitive programming is or what we have to do in college but it some uh, people always say to me that it's somewhere my dedication and determination that i always get to know things beforehand uh, so yeah i knew it just naturally i never tried to get things but yeah they just came to me so yeah mom i am having one doubt means i am also registered yeah. in many competitive coding websites but yes. mom there are so many so how to select one means like hacker rank code chef spog there are many so how to select one yeah. and the, which is the best uh see it depends it's personal choice so honestly like you should do, uh in my case it was like i started with code forces it was never like i tried code chef or i tried hacker rank or anything it was like i said that as i said no that i love challenges so my college seniors they were like code forces is the most advanced website so try it only when you are an advanced coder so i never considered myself any less so i was like okay i'll start with code forces so i started with code forces but uh people usually prefer going for hacker rank first because uh it has certain basic tutorials right so it helps you in uh, with the starting right uh, like if you're a beginner you haven't solved any problem yet you don't know a language or anything so people prefer doing hacker rank but what i have observed so far is that uh, usually if people start with hacker rank they find it very difficult to move to code chef or code forces in future because hacker rank somewhere uh, earlier when it was started it used to conduct contests but right now hacker rank is not conducting any contests so that's where it becomes difficult otherwise code chef is good uh, i'll discuss it today in the session in detail about these sites actually so you will get insights into it during the session yes mamu yeah satakshi so, uh shall it be yes. okay if you just change the background is that be okay ah uh, okay let me just try yeah i have to just uh, disconnect for that okay just a minute i'm joining again अनामिका हाँ क्या हुआ हाँ इंट्रो इंट्रो लिख लियो ना तो मैम का या लिख लिया हाँ एक्चुअली क्योंकि मैं आल्सो टेल योर बेस्ट फ्रेंड्स आई थिंक यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मैसेज योर ग्रुप दैट दे कैन अटेंड दिस सेशन आल्सो 
So students, we're going to have a session on competitive programming and uh, your presenter is uh, Siddharth Shikar. She is available with us. Soon she will, uh, she will join uh, our session. And uh, I hope uh, you, will also, uh, you will also enjoy this session. We will learn a lot from this session. Okay. So uh, please stay connected and assist your uh, batchmates also who have registered for this session. Kindly attend this. And uh, this is all work done by uh, your college students only. And uh, they invite various students from uh, other institutes so they can share uh, their experiences. Is it better now? Yes, they are audible. Uh, yeah, no, the background thing, is it better yeah, now? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. So, Satashi, it, it, uh, it's okay for you that uh, you can keep your camera on and you can uh, present at the same time. Actually, uh, if you if you're aware of it, there are riots going on here in Delhi. It's just my network is not so strong. So, okay. I can't present it at a time. Okay. So, yeah, while presentation, I'll just switch off my camera. I'll switch it on during the doubt session and during the intro. Okay, session. fine. Yeah, okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So, host uh, Anamika and Chinmay, please, Atakshi is here. You can introduce her to the students who have joined the session. Sir, can we wait for five minutes? Yes, sir. Uh, some more students are trying to join. Yes, we are waiting for other students to join. Yes, sir. So, Sadashi, uh, how's everything at JP? Yeah. What about curriculum? Uh, what are the teaching skills? What about your faculties? And uh, how the students learn about programming? Uh, actually, the curriculum is very, very amazing, I would say. Like, JP, uh, other, than, other than I would say the academic curriculum, the hostel life, the clubs, the hubs we have, they have created such, such a beautiful atmosphere, I would say. Like, every student over there, they'll be doing something. Uh, so, the, somewhere, uh, because of COVID, uh, the work has been stopped, but... If we are at college, you can never ever think that, okay, you are the best because everyone, like everyone, even a first year student, you, you can never imagine that uh, there's one student in our college who, when I entered the college, he was in second year, right? So he was a candidate master at court forces at that time. And uh, so there was this uh, two third year students, one fourth year and one second year student who was the candidate master. And I was like, okay, so... Then there, there's, there are people who are doing so much in, into development. So there's everything. People are into development. They are building models. They are doing competitive programming. They are doing something. Like They are not just uh, uh, typically into that academic stuff or just focusing on the CGPA. They are focusing on everything. You'll see people on the... So we have an OAT area, uh, which is open theater. So there we have a stage. So... Uh, you'll just uh, you'll be roaming in the college and you'll see that okay people are practicing dance over there or they're just singing like it's so people are doing everything they want to so atmosphere is really very amazing so and the students are also very supportive so uh, JP it has a very very strict regulations regarding the ragging uh, I remember. Our initial days, like uh, first two weeks of a college, 
so we used to go to the seniors for asking about like what's there into the college but they used to be scared about talking to us because uh, if any faculty or any person sees them talking with a junior they are just gone because they consider it as ragging so <laughs> they were like okay just maintain distance from us so they are very strict about ragging so somewhere that also helps because no one can actually manipulate us or anything so but then gradually uh, we bonded with seniors and uh, with the students of our own batches and they are very helpful so it's amazing life at jp is really really good i am called i am not a hosteler so uh, if you go to the college come back to home so i enjoyed that life a lot so yeah it's it's just amazing the main reason i cho- chose jp was because it's just at a distance of 5 minutes from my house so i i don't have to leave my house so yes it's just amazing i would say i i miss it a lot because of this covid but yeah well that's really nice that students are really active and uh, uh, you know what i think is this session is also been uh, based upon uh, such a, sim- a similar platform only that uh, i am uh, just here as a medium and just providing a platform that uh, the students of my uh, institute should interact with the students of other uh, institute and uh, they may exchange their ideas yeah. their culture their knowledge among uh, among each other and it will be helpful uh, for both of them especially i have just been concerned about my students that they will learn a lot from you yeah i i make sure that i can share every knowledge i have gained in these two years at my college with them so that you know i always believe that we should uh, take the world together along with us because there is nothing we can do alone right so the world should uh, develop as a whole and not as an individual so it's always uh, amazing if i can share my knowledge or whatever resources i have whatever i have learned uh, so i am fortunate enough that i am part of jp but i don't think that uh, anyone else like uh, if i even think of like uh, i am a part of jp but uh, some people also think that okay she is not an iit you know she is not uh, she does not belong to those government colleges but uh, if people think it like that and they don't uh, share their knowledges uh, their knowledge or their resources with me or with anyone how will i know about these things right so i have also gained these knowledge uh, from someone else i i want to convey it amongst you i hope someday someone among uh, from you people share it with other people so yeah we should uh, develop as a whole i just hope so that this session is uh, very useful for everyone present over here i'll try my best yes well thanks a lot sir satakshi for being uh, with us and uh, i now uh, request host to please uh, introduce satakshi and uh, let her start her presentation yes sir good afternoon all of you in the today's session of competitive programming for beginners we are having a guest satakshi ga ma'am she is second year student csc student of jp institute of information technology noida she uh, she is a google wtef fellow she cleared code jam google code jam facebook hacker hacker up qualified it's a great pleasure to welcome you ma'am here now i welcome satakshi ma'am to start the presentation hi your name is ka okay so i'm just presenting my screen So yes, uh, is my visible? Just a minute. Yes, it is visible. Ah, uh, okay, just a minute. good evening everyone uh, i am satakshi gurg and uh, as anamika introduced me i am a second year student from jp institute of information technology 
and today i am going to conduct a webinar on competitive programming so before we start a main webinar i want to uh, tell you all that competitive programming is not mandatory for placement so there's this myth in the society and in the community that uh, you cannot crack placements or you cannot go for company placements if you don't know competitive programming or for uh, bagging uh, big placements into those product based companies you have to be really amazing at competitive programming no sorry it is not so uh, competitive programming is this is a hobby if you really love it you enjoy it and pursue it don't pursue it because you want placements places have a nothing to do with competitive programming the most comp the most competitive programming can do for your placements is you can pro probably get a programming should can just add as one point in your achievement section in the resume right so the rest of the resume has to be filled with all your projects your work experience so competitive programming should never be done thinking in mind that okay i'll bag placements do it because you love it or you enjoy it right so yeah let's start uh, so what is competitive programming competitive programming is a sport this is what i believe so all of you would have played some sport in your school days right so if i consider an example when i was for uh, when i was given a basketball for the first time in my hand and uh, i was told the rules of the game so the first rule that was uh, like very confusing for me was that if the ball is dribbled more than twice it's a foul in basketball so for about a month i was struggling just to dribble that ball in a continuous fashion i was not able to figure out how to dribble the ball but gradually i just got used to it right then my goal used to be just to put the ball in the basket then gradually my ball started going directly to the basket but then i started focusing on okay i have to make more baskets then gradually my target used to be okay i have to make baskets from a longer distance so this is exactly what competitive programming is initially you see a problem you don't know how to actually approach it right you see okay this is the test how, I, uh, how am i supposed to write the inputs or how am i supposed to write the program but gradually when you start solving the problem you you just get used to just writing the code or the input statements and you start focusing on solving the problem then gradually you start solving the problem and you think okay i have to solve more problems then you uh, think okay now when you start solving more problems you're like okay i have to solve them faster so this is what competitive programming is you have to keep practicing practice is the key to success in competitive programming like any other sport right so various sites which hold competitive programming contests are code forces code chef ad coder there are many other sites as well like hacker rank and all but i don't prefer using them because uh they don't have such good quality contests i consider so code forces is my personal preference because the problem statements the site has designed a very real life based problems like if you will read a problem you will naturally have a smile on your face they are so real life based problems uh sometimes the problems are like okay santa claus was coming and he has to give you gifts so something like it's very natural very real life based problems second side is code chef so um, the kind of uh, contests i love about code chef are their long challenges uh, i initially started participating in code chef long challenges so the best thing about these contests is you get a time of about 10 days right and uh, what i observed was that uh, code forces holds short duration contests so code forces has a contest it's meant for 2 hours at max and in 2 hours you have to think about a problem you have to solve it and everything so you cannot uh, you usually don't give a try to questions of the concepts you are not aware of this happens in code forces or any short duration contest but in code code chef long challenge what i observed was that you know after solving like three or four problems initially 
so i am like okay these are the concepts i knew i solved the problems related to them but then what about the concepts i have never ever studied before there are problems related to them as well and i have about like 4 to 5 days left for the contest so i'll start uh learning those concepts so that i can solve that problem and and i observe that okay i'm actually learning new concepts through these long challenges right you know you target those problems to solve that problem and in 3 or 4 days you are you are done with two or three new topics so that is the best thing about coach chef long challenges uh coach chef i don't uh, personally prefer coach chef short challenges because usually their server crashes and uh, that's very very heartbreaking to see like your sitting life for a contest and the server crashes so that's i don't like that so i usually don't participate in coach chef short challenges then ad coder is a site um that it's not so famous uh, usually but it's a site which holds really amazing contests uh for beginners there's a, a contest on ad coder which is called as ad coder beginners contest contest and sorry so ad coder's beginner contest and it's really very friendly for the beginners i would say like if you haven't ever started with a uh, competitive programming you should go for ad coder beginners contest the problems are really like you start with competitive programming it's that kind of a platform so yeah these three other platforms i always prefer reason i don't uh, prefer hacker rank is because i believe that competitive programming is more about giving life contests than just solving problems randomly right and hacker rank it has somewhere it uh, is not so frequent uh, in terms of contests it has a good set of problems but it does not hold many contests so that is why i avoid hacker rank yeah so let's move to the next slide so what are the best practices you can do for competitive programming so first and foremost point as i said competitive programming is all about contests it's it's you know you may solve problems if you say that okay i'm solving 10 problems a day and uh, i'm a competitive programmer no you are not uh, let me be very clear you are not if you are not participating in life contests you are not a competitive programmer the the adrenaline rush you have during a life contest you solve problems you compete with others that is competitive programming right so go participate in contests right and that's not it right so why people say that competitive programming um, help in building up concepts is because you absolve so what is the absolving uh, you participate in a contest and you are suppose you are able to solve three out of five problems now what about those uh, next two problems so after the contest is over go sit for an hour think about those problems right so initially you will be like okay i don't know the concept of whatever right don't worry like firstly give the questions a read firstly try the fourth problem right so read it then think okay this can be done that can be done then if you're not able to solve it for about half an hour give it half an hour i would say right so then go and read the tutorial read just one line i would say not don't read the entire tutorial at once read just one line take that hint then try the problem again then if you are again not able to solve the problem then read the entire tutorial and then solve it but never read the solutions i would say like never right so this is where you actually grow with contests it, suppose like you just solve the three problems and uh, you are just done you are like okay my contest is done i have done this is it no that is not it you, are, you have not grown this was just the knowledge you implemented in a contest you didn't learn anything new right to learn something new you have to solve those next two problems as well so just go sit for an hour or two and solve those next two problems even if you are not able to solve at least learn the concept that was there behind those two problems so that is where learning comes right and uh, second point that is practice problems regularly be regular uh, so as we as i said in my first slide that competitive programming is a sport so for people who have been into sports in their school days you would remember that you used to go for sports practice in the in early morning like 4:30 5:30 they you used to go there you used to practice sports like you used to run marathons everything so it used to be regular you have to practice it regularly you can't say that okay i'll uh, i have 
some i have a contest coming i'll participate i'll practice for one month before the contest and that's done no and that's not it for competitive programming you have to be very regular like start with like okay i have i have solved one problem a day then make it to two problems a day then five problems a day 10 problems a day do it gradually and adapt it so that's how competitive programming works so how to practice so here's the book Uh, this is the link to the book i'll show you just after the presentation gets over so this is the guide uh, basically to um, icpc so yeah is anyone speaking okay so uh, this book is a guide to icpc so in the coming slides i'll tell you what actually icpc is so this uh, you can actually consider icpc as the olympics of competitive programming so this book is the guide for that and if you want to actually i always say that uh, if someone calls oneself a competitive programmer your aim should not be to crack some placements your aim should be to crack a competitive programmer that is what i strongly believe then secondly uh for problem solving you see the code forces problem set or there are top coder tutorials uh, top coder is a site which uh, just uploads tutorials on various topics like dp or there are many topics right so they are very very nicely written tutorials i would say so uh, they are in a reference to competitive programming so they are much more relatable so yeah and uh, then virtual contest what is this virtual contest so uh, what happens is uh, suppose uh, usually code forces has its contests at 8 pm at night right or some days it has like at 35 uh, at after in, in the afternoon right so suppose you have a college class or you have some meeting which is planned during the contest and you and you are not able to participate in the contest so what like uh, will you not participate in the in the contest or what so what happens is uh, code forces provides us this facility that you may just go on the site and select the contest you want to participate in and do it as a virtual contest so what happens is you'll get a real vote a real contest feel it will start a timer and everything though it won't affect your ratings but you'll get a real feel of a contest so i won't say that uh, stop participating in live contest and just to watch the contest no live contest the live contest and they should always be preferred but in case you are not able to participate then you should try for virtual contest yeah so yeah so this is our next slide which says about the prestigious coding contests so first one is our acm icpc so uh, as i said it is the olympics of competitive programming so basically what it is is uh this is the international level team based competitive programming contest so uh, a team of 3 to 4 people is there uh, you are there in a college and there are many teams right who are uh, preparing for icpc uh, suppose there are about 20 teams so every team will have three or four members so three members are the main participants in one uh, member is considered as a standby right so in the main contest only three, three people participate and not the fourth and not the fourth member right so this is how the team distribution happens in icpc so how it starts is that you have a college you form a team so suppose there are 20 teams in a college so all 20 can't go right so icpc holds uh, an online challenge for every country right so in india it happens so people uh, so all the teams participate in it now the best team from the college they it heads towards the regionals now what is this regional so if we talk about india there are about uh, four regionals if we if i remember it correctly one is amritapuri side one is uh, gwalior or guwahati one is there then uh, there's kharagpur there's kanpur right and they keep changing right sometimes it's kolkata as well so the, the, these are different regions where this regional uh is held right so for example it's kanpur so iit kanpur 
conducts ICTC regionals at its center. So the teams, the best teams from different colleges across the country, they reach that regional and they participate in an on-site round at this time. And now the one winner, that ultimate winner of each regional, then from all over the world, like there are many regionals, like in India, there are four to five, and in many countries, there are many regionals. So every winner from each regional is then uh, headed towards the world finals, where they finally compete in the ICPC round. So yeah, that and then that's it about ICPC. Uh, this is it. For more details, you should actually research about it because uh, I I actually participated in it last year. That time I didn't know anything about competitive programming, but I wanted to give it a shot, so I tried it. So by participating only, you'll get more details about it and you, you can read about it as well. So yes. Secondly, the coding contest which is there is Google Code Jam. So ICPC is a team-based contest. But what about if we don't want to participate in a team contest? So Code Jam, Google Code Jam is an individual competitive programming contest, which Google holds in around, if I remember it correctly, like um, March, about March, right? So its qualification round is conducted in month of March. And uh, I don't know if it happens every year, but last year it was about, there were five problems. And uh, uh, they, as the contest starts, they tell us that, okay, you have to score these many minimum points in order to head towards the next round. So suppose we have this first round and uh, they tell us that, the total points of all the questions is suppose 70. And they say that in order to qualify for the next round, you have to score minimum 45 points. So you have to solve problems so that your score is 45 at any cost so that you head towards the next round. Then you head towards the, once you qualify for the, uh, the qualification round, then you head towards the first round. First round has three sub rounds. So what happens is the top 1500 participants of each round, they head towards the second round. Then in the second round, the top 1000 participants, they head towards the third round. Then the top 25 participants are uh, there in the world finals. So this is how Google Code Gym happens. And this is, I guess, everyone actually would be aware of this contest because it's the most prestigious contest. Secondly, it's uh, conducted by Google. So you, of course, like it has great opportunities. You get to interact with people and uh, yeah. So last year when I participated in it, uh, I was actually not even aware of it that it was going on. Some of my college seniors uh, just uh, posted it in a group that uh, Google Code Jam is going on. And if someone's interested, you may try it out. So hardly like seven or eight hours were left. Uh, for the qualification round and I and I just sat randomly like okay let's just give it a shot and I solved the first problem the second problem and uh, to qualify if I remember it correctly uh, four questions or three questions something like that these many were required so uh, the contest was about to get over at five early morning right so I made my last submission at 4.30 and I was qualified for the first round. And I was like, okay, wow, that was my first ever uh, like boost towards competitive programming. So that, that was my first ever big contest I would consider. So then I headed towards the first round. So first round was very difficult for me. I would say the first two rounds, I said that first round has three sub rounds, right? So uh, the initial two rounds, I couldn't even solve a single problem. But in the final third round, I solved one problem. And though I couldn't qualify to the second round, but for me that solving one problem in first round was very, like was such a big thing for me that time, right? So yeah, then now you would be thinking that, okay, I don't know anything about how Google conducts coding contests, right? I have no idea about the Google coding contest or how should I know about what's the pattern of Google coding contests? So Google Kickstart is your place. 
right so google kickstart is not like once a year thing it's eight times in a year google conducts its coding contest right and uh, it's like uh, once in one one and a half month you can consider it like that right so you have a 3 hour long contest and you participate in it all the international coders like from eric to to william lin everyone is there right so you sit there you participate along with them and uh, there are four problems and uh, like any other regular competitive programming contest the faster you solve the better the ranking is uh, the plus points of this google kickstart is uh, you can highlight your good ratings in your resume plus in case like i'm not sure i have just heard this in case you get a really good uh, ranking in any google kickstart round you may get a uh, call from a recruiter this is something i've heard i'm not sure right so this is just a speculation and i'm not sure about it but yeah this is what i have heard right so this is the third contest not talking about the fourth contest it's facebook hacker cup so similar very similar i would say to google code jam it is just that it is conducted by facebook so facebook co- conducts its competitive programming contest for individual participants uh, called as this hacker cup and uh, like it has this qualification on similar to google code jam you have to score those minimum points then head towards the next round the next round and then you have that world finals at the facebook office so this is what happens in all these contests i hope you are clear with these con- uh, contests so let's move towards our last slide so yes uh, this is the slide uh, which is which says choose a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life so if uh, okay let's start like this uh, when whenever i open linkedin there are many people who post about like i have become a candidate master i have become this or that on code forces this and that and uh, most of the times you see that okay the people who are in big companies are competitive programmers right so always like always people are tempted to okay i should go for competitive programming but you don't find it interesting right you are not interested in it you you are like okay i'm just doing it for placements please don't like it's a uh, it's a request i would say that don't if you love it then do it otherwise you'll just waste your time over there you won't end up anywhere uh if you don't enjoy it you won't ever become a candidate master i believe you won't ever be able to head towards icpc if you truly enjoy it you love solving problems you love participating in contests that thrill of contests is something you're tempted to then go for it otherwise i always say that uh suppose you love building projects in machine learning then go and build a profile on kaggle right if you love building applications go have your applications published on google play so why are you just wasting time uh, sitting on code forces or anything right just don't do what you love the most you know if you do what you actually enjoy success will truly just follow your path you would never have to look towards people people will look after you right so just to do what you enjoy the most don't think that okay i have to do competitive programming it's just one domain in this big field of engineering you can't say that uh, i'll do competitive programming and everything is done no nothing is done dude you have to do what you love the most even if you do competitive programming you crack a placement right what after that you have to work somewhere right and what if you don't enjoy the work do what you love the most suppose you are actually enjoying the game development right and uh, uh, usually people don't know but uh, google has many open source projects where they require game developers but because everyone is just running after competitive programming a game developer would think that okay why to build a game let's just go for competitive programming do no just wait build your games get you know build such a game that everyone goes crazy about it and google google comes to you and says that okay come build games for us build yourself in such a way that 
everyone wants you right so yeah that's it all the best for your future and in case you have any questions so i'm home you may ask so yes all of you are free to ask the question please unmute your mic or just write the question in the chat box if you have any Mama. doubt like yes mom what is google w t e f uh so google w t e f it's uh, a program which is created by google for first year uh, i won't say first year right uh, every year its eligibility criteria changes so last year for me it was that the first year engineering uh, students of csc branch can apply for a professional training under google right so uh, there were about like 15000 or 18000 applicants and out of that the top 126 women engineers from india were selected for a professional training right so what usually is supposed to happen is that in june we are called at hyderabad right for a professional training so the program is basically managed by talent sprint as well as google so the training we receive from talent sprint mentors and then our mentoring sessions or um, basically what uh, we can say is we have regular interaction sessions or uh, all these things they are conducted by google so we are even provided scholarship uh, for the program right so uh, uh, suppose we go wait in june we have to go to hyderabad to talent sprint right talent sprint will train us then we have a trip to google hyderabad office as well so this program is two year two years long where we are trained so that we can actually become good professional leaders so that we can be good for google in short so we are being trained for google in short so yes this is the program and uh, uh for me it was the, el the eligibility criteria was first year women engineers of csc branch but this year probably the eligibility criteria might change like uh, the batch which was uh, before us it was just for third or fourth year uh, engineering girls during our time it was first year women engineers and this year it might change so there's no surety about the eligibility criteria but yeah the program is this that you are trained uh, we have regular sessions online sessions so due to covid we have online sessions but if covid was not there we were supposed to go for an offline boot camp to hyderabad yes anything else mom what the strategies means you were selected in it means what different you had done so that you were selected uh, tell us so yeah uh, actually uh, we were there was an application process there were actually many stages i wouldn't say that just one application process was there we had to fill the application so after our application got shortlisted we were supposed to uh, go, give a coding challenge right so there was a coding challenge there half of the questions were mcq based half of the questions we had to write co code so i was in first year at that time right so we wrote the code so the best performers they got shortlisted for the next round so the next round was uh, we were tested for our aptitude skills as well as our english speaking skills so aptitude test was there and then uh, english it was not just written or mcq based we had to actually speak on it and they will judge us on the basis of our pronunciation and everything so then the people who qualify that round they were uh gone for the next final interview round uh before interview we were actually trained for python so then we were uh, headed towards the interview round and uh, then interview happened and the people who were shortlisted after the interview they were about like 150 girls who shortlisted after the interview we were trained for one month right it was not uh we were still not part of wtf we were trained for one month and 
on the basis of a performance during that training phase top 126 uh, goals were selected for the women technicals engineering fellows program so in june it officially started so yeah that's uh, that's how the process goes this year i i'm not sure maybe it changes uh, I, i guess in the coming weeks if i'm if i can think of it probably in the coming week the application forms will open up for the wts program so yeah let's see what happens any any other question related to competitive programming if you want to know like if anyone having any questions please ask to her students any questions related to coding programming any language you want to ask sadakshi so, uh, usually students have an issue that uh, when to start coding they don't get any logic which programming language they should start so being as a student okay. uh, please kindly uh, just tell students how you have started this thing okay so uh i i won't say that there's any perfect timing or uh, you should wait for your second or third year so that you can start with competitive programming do it whenever you want to whenever you like doing it i started it in my first year itself there are people who wait for second year uh, and they think that okay let's have a proper knowledge of data structures and algorithms and then only we can start uh it's your call completely you may do whenever you are comfortable in it but as i said that do it only if you enjoy it don't wait for placements and for language i would say uh if you don't know any language before like you have no uh, no coding knowledge and you want to start fresh right so go for c++ i would say because it's uh, considered as the fastest language and uh, in competitive programming it's all about speed right so you should go for uh, c++ but in case uh, you know language like you already know java or you know python then start with it uh, i i do competitive programming in java and python right because i already knew java and python i came to know along with this wtf program so what i what i do is i the initial problems in a contest they are very easy problems right and they just require short codes so i do them in python and the bigger problems which are like data structure based or anything like a recursion based i try doing them in java because python is slower in in those concepts so uh, i don't think language should be a constraint if uh, you are going for any uh, programming or anything you should just go after the concept and uh, see what which language works the best for any concept so yeah you uh and there's no such perfect time i would say that you should start competitive programming or you should start coding in this year in fact even when you are done with your engineering right your four years are done here you are a graduate and some day you are just sitting on your laptop and you saw you the code forces for the first time when you started solving problems and you just found it interesting so it's not late it's it's never late i would say you can start it when you want to uh, but in case you are just focusing on that okay i have to build my problem solving skills for cracking placements then i would say start it in uh, start it in the second or the third year and i won't suggest that go for code forces or code chef it won't lead you anywhere except losing your self confidence go for lead code or interview better they are better sites for placements right so they have problems which are completely based on what you are asked in an interview right so go for those sites in a uh, lead core interview bit Th- those are much better sites uh, in terms of placements Co- uh, code forces code chef are not meant for placements or anything otherwise for competitive programming do it whenever you want to there is no such time constraints i would say yeah thank you for answering that question Uh, thanks a lot actually for uh, suggesting the students and um, i request students uh, if they are having any questions please ask okay uh, let me just show you the book i was talking about right uh, so
So Satashi, if we can start uh, uh, the slow, for example, if I just say uh, five days of coding, coding challenge or seven days of coding challenge, 11 days of coding challenge in our institute. So is that okay. be uh, fine? Um, yes, you may start. Like uh, even uh, I remember, like how I started competitive programming was uh, one of my seniors. He uh, started conducting contests for us. Like uh, they were just matchups on code forces, and he started conducting them on a weekly basis. So this is where I uh, actually started uh, falling in love with competitive programming. I would say so. Yeah, maybe I won't say that it would work for everyone, but there would be some people who have never tried with competitive programming and they might love it. Like, okay, this is something new they should work with. So, yes, uh, I would say you may start it, uh, start like this. But for that, I would suggest that uh, uh, you should uh, have, some, have everything planned in advance. Like, uh, if you are conducting contests, they must be regular. Like... Uh, if it is supposed to be uh, conducted on Saturdays, then conduct it regularly. Don't do it like, uh, okay, one Saturday is there, other Saturday is not there. Or uh, what uh, our seniors used to do was, uh, we used to have contests on Saturdays or Sundays, uh, whatever it was like. We used to have a poll on the WhatsApp group and uh, uh, whatever was the result, we used to have the contest on that day. Then... After the contest, we used to have a meetup in the uh, that time there was no lockdown or anything. So we used to have a meetup after the college hours, wherein we used to discuss the problems related to the co uh, contest, as well as they used to uh, tell us about certain concepts uh, that, okay, these are the concepts which are very important or you should learn it this way. These are the resources you should use for competitive programming. So they used to help us in that way. So we hardly did it for about two or three weeks uh, as lockdown was announced. But yeah, that helped me a lot. So, yes. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Satakshi, for such a kind suggestion. And um, we'll try to start it as soon as possible. And I request you uh, to be also a member of that particular uh, activity as we want to start it. Uh, I, I actually can't uh, commit because... Uh, See, I have my college classes as well as my WTF program classes. So uh, I have to see my work schedule. And in case I'll be able to, uh, then I'll, I'll surely love to contribute to it. But I can't actually commit right now because anytime any class announcement is made and I have to go for it. So yeah, I can, if I am free, I'll, I'll always be ready to help. But in case I'm not, I, I can't promise. Yes. Well, thanks. Uh, any other question, host? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, as the first year student, uh, I do not have much knowledge about coding. I know the basics of Python. Ma'am, I want to know more. So what your suggestion I took the coaching or just do the competitive coding? Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm such a person, I won't ever say that, see, there's one thing called as tutorial loop, right? So what happens is you feel that firstly, I'll complete all the concepts, I'll learn all the data structures and algorithms, and then I'll start with competitive programming. And that learning phase never ends, I would say. Uh, you start learning a concept, you, suppose you pick up uh, arrays, right? and you start solving problems. You don't know, uh, you are at the beginner level. So you don't know that arrays has every kind of problems in it. There, there's a DP in it as well. So you will keep uh, just uh, revolving around in the loop and you won't ever stop. In, instead, I always suggest that if you have to start, just uh, initially start participating in virtual contest, I would say go or okay let me show you one thing i actually uh, i can show you one thing you can do um see uh, last week itself i was actually observing this so this is the code forces site right so here you have this contest tab so here these are all the past contests which have been held throughout right so uh what I have been doing these days is, 
um okay so here if you go on the fifth tab i would say the contest just the, yeah so see here with 479 this is the first ever uh, division 3 contest which code forces actually uh, organized right so on code forces there are three levels i would say division 1 division 2 and division 3 right so division 3 is the one which you should start with for beginner level so just go on it and see you uh, you are seeing the options okay let me zoom the screen so here they give an option as virtual participation right so click on it and see when you click on it you get an option that set the time whenever you want to start set a time and start a virtual contest right so when you start the virtual contest the contest appears and you get the problem start solving them right initially you won't be able able to solve even a single problem right you see the, uh, this contest 481 right this was my first ever contest if i remember so i i could solve just one problem out of it at that time so initially what happens is you won't be able to solve even a single problem not because you don't have the coding skills but because you don't know how to approach a problem in competitive programming platform so just try it sit for about 1 hour or 1.5 hours and then stop the contest and uh, start reading the tutorials that how to solve or how to approach the problem sorry yes yeah so when you actually start solving the problems you'll uh, get used to them so do it regularly like okay first contest second contest start solving div 3 this division 3 contest uh, start participating in them virtually so once you are a bit comfortable with them like uh, you are solving uh, three or four problems so then start participating in live contests so yes this is what you can do mom here yes mom there are two option uh, that is visible on the screen enter in the virtual participation what is the difference between both of them uh, so if you just click on this enter okay where is okay let me just click on it randomly so it will just show you the problem statements you are not actually participating in it you just see the questions you click on you if you click on it the question opens and you read the uh, okay just let it load yeah so here is a problem statement you read it and you just make a submission so you are actually just uh, it is random problem solving it is not participating in any contest whereas if you click on virtual participation you actually get a timer over here like here where it is written finished no so you will get a timer over here that okay this much time is left this much time is left and you'll even uh, if you see the final standings you though your ratings won't be affected but on the final standings page your, your name would be there you can see okay if i would have participated in this contest my standings would have been this much internationally right so they are not official but yes you can just speculate about your standings okay that that okay right now i stand here but if you solve the problems randomly you won't get any idea about how you stand in a contest so this is the difference between enter and virtual participation Uh, is it clear? Yes, ma'am, clear. Fully yeah. clear. So, yeah. So, uh, okay. Let me just uh, brief you about how you can actually operate code forces. I think that would help you people. So, this is the main homepage of code forces. So here, uh, I have I already have an account. So here it is written like this. But in case you don't have an account. uh here an option is given as register so you just register over there with your email id and you get your account right so when you get the account uh so sub, you click on this contests option so see uh here three contests are upcoming one is on 5th february and two are on 7th february so now you would be wondering like 
uh, how can i participate in two contests on 7 february they are both on the same time so they are actually not meant both are not meant for you one is division 2 and one is division 1 right so division 1 people are the most advanced coders so the people with the ratings above 2100 are eligible to participate in it and the people who are below the ratings of 2100 even you will be able uh, you you will be eligible to participate in division 2 but it is a little more advanced than division 3 so i always uh, advise beginners to go for division 3 instead of division 2 and division 2 uh, division 3 is specifically meant for people who have ratings below 1800 or 1900 i don't remember exact figures so it is meant for those so you get these contest and here like after 4 days see here it is written no before registration 4 days so after 4 days you'll get a register option over here you register for it and at 85 here it is written 25 85 at night the contest is live and you participate in it right so this, this is how it happens and suppose you have to solve problems randomly so here is the problem set uh, which is visible on the screen so what happens is see what what this is is uh, this is a difficulty level of each problem so 1700 1100 so if i just sort it so initially it gets sorted in the descending order so the highest difficulty level is 3000 3500 now i have to sort it in ascending order i just click it again and see here it is like 800 800 so you start solving problems so all the unsolved problems are like uh, this these are blank right if it is visible like these are white colored but all the solved problems these are green in color if if they are accepted and they'll be red in color if they are uh, red thank you it will be on third page so if the if you submitted some wrong submission so it will show you a red tab over there so i don't know why any red tab is not there are many wrong submissions but yeah so if they it would have been red in color if there was a wrong submission now suppose uh, you are like okay i don't want to solve it on the basis of difficulty but i want to solve the problems which most people have solved to date right so this is the number of submissions you can see right so we sort it so initially it gets sorted in the descending order so then i sort it again and i get it right so 1900 1400 so i start like this okay so now uh, if i if i have to suggest you one thing i'll say that go for the submissions option rather than rather than this difficulty option because uh, usually what happens is when you start solving on the basis of difficulty uh, you get used to just to one difficulty level you are not actually uh, experimenting with the difficulty levels whereas if you actually sort it on the basis of submissions you are solving with the variety of problems like you see here it is 800 then 1000 then uh, 900 is also there so there are different difficulty levels so that is a better practice of problem solving then just solving it on the basis of uh, that difficulty level c here's the right submission and this is the wrong submission so it shows that okay i submitted it but it was a wrong submission so yeah this is how it works yeah i don't think anything else is needed on code forces and uh, see uh, if talking about one's profile right so if i click on my username over here i get it like this so what all it shows is see this is my contest performance all the dots they shows how, in how many contests i have participated so far right so uh, right now my ratings uh, ratings are very bad i would say uh, they're just dropping down every day but yes if you will talk about contest this will show me how many contests i have participated oh why is it not showing how many contests i have participated in so far right and it shows that okay in this contest it was minus 101 or in this contest is it was 234 then it will show what was the international ranking in each contest so in this it was 9800 then 9800 this my best ranking it was 900 i don't know how it happened but yes yeah so these are the contests you can see uh, how you have to participate yeah 
so this is it you have to know about cold forces yeah is there anything else you all want to know ma'am one question himanshu is, uh, is asking is our yeah. rating card affected if we do not able to solve the problem uh if you uh there's one thing which is that you don't even attempt a you didn't attempt the question right you saw the problem you were not able to solve it and you did not even um make one wrong submission so your ratings won't be affected right but suppose you saw the problem and you made a wrong submission over there and then you quitted the contest your ratings would be affected there because you made a submission unless and until you are making a submission be it wrong or right you are there in the contest but if you are not making any submission right so you are not there in the contest your ratings won't be affected uh, okay ma'am any other question ma'am are all doubts are cleared by your presentation ma'am your presentation is really so good and uh, you explained all in very go good and well mannered thank you so much ma'am now i welcome chinmay for the vote of thanks thank you so much ma'am it was a wonderful session today's session was full of knowledge and in interesting things i personally learned a lot from you about programming as i am a ec branch matlab uh, i have taken ec branch and i don't have any idea about programming and then you tell me about it and i got it well thanks a lot satakshi yeah like thank you actually for welcoming me over here this uh, as i said to you so that this is my first ever such tech talk i have i am conducting because i have never done this before in my life so it is one such experience i'll remember and yeah thank you it it was amazing interacting with you people um well um uh, you have uh, given a lot of uh, information about competitive programming and and uh, how to uh, approach such kind of events and you also guided the students at uh, how to uh, do coding when to do coding what language they need to select so uh, it's a really wonderful session from your side and uh, i hope uh, students uh, have also enjoyed this session they uh, got a lot of information uh, from this session and uh, definitely uh, they will uh, gonna uh, learn a lot from it and uh, i guess uh, in the coming time uh, since uh, we are having a lot of first year students uh, have joined this session so um, i guess uh, as uh, they approach to higher semesters definitely they gonna work on it and, um, and it's it's really good that uh, we will be having uh, such kind of more sessions in the future so it will be uh, like a mentor thing and um, it's it's really nice so uh, thanks a lot satakshi again for being with us here and uh, i just uh, want to say uh, that any of the students want to give a feedback to satakshi they can write into comment section they can also say from their side yeah thank you so much so uh, like for your feedback and if anyone else uh, if you genuinely uh, feel felt that i can improve upon anything you may just suggest me openly uh, i am open to your comments and your suggestions uh, i'll try to improve myself uh, if i ever get a chance in future to conduct such sessions so i'll try to implement uh, those well, skills over there so yes in case no, you felt uh, yes well, Actually, we uh, the complete recording of this uh, session. I will sh share with you. I will share with all the uh, students who have registered sure. with us, and uh, definitely I will uh, uh, also take the feedback and whatever the suggestions will come. I will share with uh, you also. Yeah, yeah, sure. That would be great. Okay, uh, so thanks a lot, Satakshi. Once again, thanks to the host. Thanks to all the students who have joined this session, and uh, it's a very uh, wonderful uh, evening. So. Yeah, that's okay from my side. Yeah, it was amazing. Thank, thank you so for... much, ma'am. Th thank you so you much, ma'am, for uh, having me. Okay. It was a yeah. yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you, Satakshi, ma'am. Ma'am, as a junior, I want you to guide us and you 
please take more session to guide us i'll try my best uh whatever time i can invest like i can simply say that see i usually don't get get much time uh for such sessions or anything but whatever uh, knowledge i have i usually try to convey it through my linkedin so that um, all the people over there they get to whatever uh, they get all the knowledge i have so maybe i won't be able to take uh, more sessions i'll try my level best but in case i'm not you may just, just uh, scroll my linkedin profile and uh, my all the posts are public and everything so you may just uh, look through them there are blogs i have posted on competitive programming plus i have written one blog specifically on google coding competitions so if you people want you may even uh, look through it so yeah that that can help you people yes ma'am we will see yeah on linkedin yeah sure thank you ma'am thank you um may i leave yes ma'am you can yeah okay thank you thank you so much ma'am for having us with us yeah yeah thank you so much